Hello again. In this video, uh, we're going to keep talking about calculation groups, but one specific aspect of them, and that is applying conditional formatting when using calculation groups. Um, in my last video, I went through why uh, calculation groups are awesome, and hopefully you'll start using them more if you're not already. Um, but uh, if you search out there, um, there's a few posts out there that talk about how to use conditional formatting with calculation groups because the the options are a little limited. Um, there are a couple posts out there I've seen where you can use uh, values rules in the conditional formatting and then get creative with your expression to return blank when there's no formatting desired or, or any value and then you basically make a rule that says you know if, if it's greater than zero whatever um, then apply the formatting. Um, it turns out it's also possible to do conditional formatting with a field expression, and, and I'm going to show you that one here. Um, if you're learning from these videos or enjoy them, please uh, subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel or, or follow me on Twitter. All right, let's get started. Um, this video assumes you're familiar with using calculation groups, and of course that can only be done uh, with Tabular Editor. It can't be done natively in Power BI, um, so when I jump over to that, you, you won't be surprised. Um, but this is just um, a quick demo I'm going to do. I've got this real simple uh, data table here, and I have already created uh, calculation items that uh, do um, that you pass in a measure, either a max or a sum, uh, and then do certain combinations of A and B or C and D or just A and just B. Um, those are the, the four that I've done. And in this case, I've also created two what I call override items, where it says, hey, whatever measure you pass me, um, just always calculate the max or just always calculate the sum. So it's not using the selected measure. Um, it's just overriding whatever is passed there. And we'll show you those expressions in a second. Um, but I want to demonstrate that you can uh, re do conditional formatting uh, with those. Um, down below is um, the same visual, but in this case, I'm actually just, uh, and this is a good way to check um, if your conditional formatting is is going to work or not, is to calculate. In this case, I've created this color measure here. Um, so if I highlight that above, you can see that um, basically you can sort of check which calculation group you're in. So therefore detect, you know, is this the, is this the one I want to uh, conditional format or not. So I just store that in a variable, whatever the selected value is of the, the name of the, the calculation item. And then I just do a simple switch true where I check if that item is in some hard coded tables here. So if it's one of the A or B only ones, then use this and, and you can use hex codes or you can just put like red, blue, whatever. I wanted the lighter color. So I, I found these hex codes to put them in for this demo. Um, and then uh, check that one. If it's not, check this one. If it's in the A, B, or the C, D one, use this color. And if it's in these override items, sum or max, uh, use that color. Otherwise, return blank. And um, you're probably familiar with um, doing conditional formatting here, where if you go to the uh, measure here and go to conditional formatting and go to background color, you can see how I've set this up where I've got it format based on a field value and then I chose uh, that color measure measure that I just showed you. Um, and that, that works well, but there is one trick that I want to show you um, that works well for what I call the, the context items where it's saying, hey, pass me a measure and then um, I'll calculate your measure in the new context. So if we jump over to tabular editor, and we look at this uh, group here, you can see for the A, B one, it says, okay, calculate whatever measure I pass you, selected measure, um, but do it in this context where the, the letter, column, category values are either A or B or C, or C and D or just A or just B. Um, and so, so that works fine. Um, and the, the good news is that, that the way I wrote that color measure is it's just checking what the name is of it. So it's hard saying, hey, what's the selected value of the calculation item name? And so it returns A, B, or C, D, or A only, B only. Um, and so even in that context, 
that value is still returned, so my color measure still returns the correct value. Where it's a little trickier is with um, max or sum, where in this case, um, I actually had to change this, that originally uh, this, this was deleted and it, all it was was the max num. So this was an override. So there was no um, selected measure in here. It just is override no matter what you put in there, calculate the max. Um, but I built this logic in here so that I could still do conditional formatting where I did a, a if statement first where I said, hey, if the measure that is being passed to you is the color measure, then evaluate that measure. Otherwise, override that measure and calculate the max. And the same exists here for that for that sum one as sum measure that sum override item as well. And be, because that is set up that way, um, you know that's why you know when I first started out here, these these first four rows um, were returning values, but this was returning blank. Um, or actually it was returning the max and the sum because it was an override. So even in conditional formatting, when the color measure was assigned to it, the override item was still forcing it to calculate a max or a sum, and therefore it didn't have a color value uh, and, it, and it didn't work. Um, you know, these didn't uh, have color before. But once I built that logic in with the first check, if this is the color measure, uh, and if it is, evaluate that without overriding it, um, then everything worked. So again, just a real quick video to show you how to do conditional formatting. You know, so, so do your, come up with a, a measure that returns the colors. Um, in most cases, it'll probably work if you're just doing like a context item where you're evaluating a measure. And if, if all you're doing is to determine your color going and looking at the selected value of the name of the calculation item, you're probably going to be fine. Um, but if, if not, then you now know how to do it in um, building into your expression to first evaluate um, what measure is being passed. And if it's the color one, let it through and return the color. And then you can get the conditional formatting. So hopefully you found that helpful. And a reminder to subscribe to the Hoosier BI channel so that you can stay up to date with all the future videos. Thank you.